Good morning, students. My name is Mr. Mashalela. I'm going to be taking you for computer practice and for this is going to be our first lesson. And uh, please make sure that you have your computer ready as well as uh, Microsoft Word because today we are going to be concentrating on the practical part, which is Microsoft Word Office. What I'm going to be covering in this short topic for today. I will be editing a document by doing the following. It's going to be editing by bold, by italics, underline or double underline, in writing a word in full, uppercase, as well as lowercase. Then that will be it for this video for, for now. So you can post this, to, you can post this video so that you can collect evidence that you will need. I won't be using any textbook for this lesson. I'm, I'm gonna be user friendly because I can understand that some of you don't have, even have a material at home. But at least if you can have a computer on so that while watching this video, you can also practice what I'm doing because this is a practice, uh, practice lesson. Uh, I'm going to edit a document. It doesn't matter if you don't have the same document that I'm having here. But for you, it is at least to type a paragraph. That paragraph can be from a novel or from a newspaper or anywhere else. But as long as it is an English paragraph, then what you're going to be doing, as I'm editing a word, you're going to target any word in your paragraph and try to edit according to what I'm doing. doesn't have to be the same word that I'm doing on, the computer, on my computer instead. So the first part, as I've said, I'll be doing editing by doing a bold on a certain word. I'll target any word on the first paragraph. For instance, I'll target this word on the second sentence, which is Olympics. You can follow me by looking at the case I'm also going. That's why I'm, I'm, I am as, as I'm talking. First, before you can bold the word, you need to first highlight that word. If you want to highlight a word, you can use a keyboard. Using a keyboard, you can easily place your cursor mouse at the front of that word. Then pre press and hold shift button on your keyboard. Then use the arrow keys to go to the direction where you want to highlight to. For instance, I'm going to the right, I'm using the right arrow key. Then that word is highlighted. Then in order for me to bold, there's a shortcut for bold on, on my home topic here. The topic, if you press home on, on our topics, then there is this B. The B represents bold. If you press it, the word automatically becomes bold. So bold can apply to a single word or multiple words or even a sentence or a paragraph, sometimes a topic. So if they ask you that function, I'm, I'm sure you know it by now. Let's quickly go to the second one. The second one is italics the number two one italics i'm gonna be editing a certain word into an italic going back to my document i'm gonna target any word on the same paragraph for instance on the first line i've got this word officially so practice the highlighting part as i've told you you can highlight by your keyboard or highlight using your mouse using your mouse you, you simply press and hold the right click the left click then highlight to what the direction that you want to highlight to. After highlight, I've highlighted that word that I want to it to change it to italics. I simply go to the home home topic on top. Then italic is just next to the bold. It is that eye which is slanted toward your right side. If I press it, then the word will also slide, which means now it is italics. The third command, it is. Editing a word by underlining it. They can ask you to underline a word, a sentence, a paragraph, or sometimes even a topic. For instance, I've got this topic here on top, which is Rio 2016. If you can see that topic in, even on the document. You can highlight any word, it doesn't have to be a topic. You simply highlight the topic, or it's highlight that word. Then for underline, under the topic home, after italics, there was bold and italics, then there is this U. The U represents underline. If you click on that U, 
then the word becomes underlined. So in this case, our topic has been underlined. The next one, it is a double underline. Double underline, it means that the word must have two lines that is underlining it. This one had a single line underlining it. But it double underline, it means the lines must be two. If you want to use that function, let me target another word instead. I will target this word summer. On the first line, the third word, which is summer. So I first highlight it. Then going to the home topic, going to the U, which, which represents underline. There is this arrow, small arrow next to the U. If you click it, then you're going to get this box with different types of lines. The first one is the single line, single underline. The second one is double lines, which means it's a double underline. So in our case, we're looking for a double underline. We'll pick the second one. You can even see that after the double underline, there's a tick line, which is a tick, tick underline, as well as a dotted line, which is a underlining with dot lines. But let's concentrate on the one that we are using now, which is double underline, the second one. If you click on it, the word will be double underlined with two lines, which was some. Let's quickly go back and, and recap. We've done bold, we've done italic, we've done underline and double underline. Now we are on number four, which is writing or typing a word in full. In most cases, they refer to words which were types, for instance, uh, with short abbreviations, sometimes in numerical way. But if they are asking you to type that word in full, that means if it was a numerical word, it means you must write type it in full as in English word. For instance, on my last, last line on the same paragraph, there is this 21 August 2016, but let's concentrate on 21. 21 is typed in numerical way, but I want to type that word in full. That means if they're asking me to type in full, it means you must remove that word. You can delete it, highlight and delete it, but remove it totally, then type it again, which was 21. You type 21 in English, in plain English, then now it's, it, it is, it is say, written the same way, 21, but now in, in a way of English format, no more, no more numerical way. Sometimes they can ask you to write a word in full, for instance, if it was an abbreviation, for instance, etc, that means you're supposed to type etc. Sometimes eg, which means you need to type it for example. Sometimes it can be an abbreviation of a country, uh, like RSA. RSA represents the Republic of South Africa. That means you have to type Republic of South Africa. USA, United States of America, and so on and so on. They can even ask you to type HIV in, in full or AIDS in full, all those kind of words that you normally do, do not even consider thinking about the full, 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 full word instead of the abbreviation. But you must know it when it comes to this. Now, sometimes you can have a, a problem when it comes to the correct spelling. For instance, if you're not sure about 20, how to, how to type 20. Let's say maybe you put it in R, the 20 with an R. The computer is going to highlight the word with a red highlighted dot, with an underlining red. If you want to correct or to be sure if the spelling is correct, you simply right click on the word. Then the computer is going to give you options on top of the box. For instance, 20 was supposed to be typed like this. Then you simply click the correct spelling. Automatically, the word will be typed according to the correct one. You can even see on my document, there are words that are typed in, the data underlined in red. That means the computer does not recognize the word in a plain English. So if you are typing, you must always be cautious about such words. But in this case, if the if the document was already typed, then you don't have to panic or 
you don't have to change anything. But if you're typing it from another document, it simply means that you have to refer to that document and check the correct spelling of that word. Sometimes, for instance, uh, words for names of countries, towns, mountains, and so and people, surnames, they will be underlined with a red underlining part, meaning that the computer does not recognize that word in plain English. But if you read it, you can see that it is the correct word. You don't have to change that one because the computer does not recognize it, but it is written like that according to the document you're referring to. Let's quickly go to the next one. The next one is to type a word in uppercase. Uppercase represents capital letters. That means that word, if they ask you to type it in uppercases, that means you are supposed to type it in capital letters. Capital letters means all the alphabets on that word must be in capital letters. So the fastest way on a computer to change a word which is typed in small letters to a capital letter. Let me show you very, very fast. For instance, this word, Genario, for, a, for a, a town in Brazil, if they ask you to change in capital letters, that means you first need to highlight it with the method that I've just taught you. After that, there is this A under the home button. There is this A which has got a, a bigger A and a small A, which is a double A in fact. You simply go to the arrow next to it. Then you get a box with uh, dif different options. First one is lowercase, next one is uppercase, and so on. In this case, they ask us to type this word in uppercase, which is capital letters. Then you can choose the uppercase option. Then the word will simply change to uppercases, general in uppercases. Next one was going to be smaller cases, number six, which is lowercase, um, I mean. It is small case or without capital letters. If they want you to change a word to small cases, for instance, this topic is, is typed in a uppercase format. You can simply highlight, go back to the same double A's, go to that arrow and choose lowercase. Then the topic will be typed in small case or lower cases. I'm sure by now, we are understanding each other so far. If you if you are not understanding something, please just play again the, the, the same video until you get it right. But if you don't get it right, then you've got the privilege to ask questions on the platform that you are using or on the website. Then we're gonna get an answer as quickly as we get we, we, we receive your question. I hope that you enjoyed this video. But before before I can close, you you must always have to save your videos or, or your work, I mean. After doing something, you must save it so that you can refer to it always when you want to. If you want to save a document, you quickly go to File on the Topics. Go to Save As. In most cases, you have to choose where you want to save the document. But in most cases, I rather prefer you to go to Document. Double click on Document. Then under documents, you simply need to create a new folder that is going to be your name where you're going to save all your works into. You click, you, 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 you create a new folder by clicking on this shortcut new folder. Then change the new folder to your name. My name is Masalela. I quickly type Masalela. Then I press enter. And I press enter again so that I can go to Masalela. As you can see up here, I'm under document, then I'm under Masalela. Then you change the, the, the file name. For instance, if this was lesson one, you quickly change it to lesson one so that you cannot get confused after there are too many of them that you've saved. Then you click on save. I'll, I'll see you guys on the next lesson. I thank you.